Hey, it's a nice fall day out here in the Lost Nation State game area. Thanks for uh, tuning in to Outside Michigan. Uh, today I'm going to uh, set up my hammock, which I've never done before. I just bought this ENO hammock uh, double nest a couple weeks back when I was down in uh, North Carolina. I've been dying to use it. I was going to come out and use it last night, uh, or yesterday morning actually. I was supposed to come out here and do some things and make some videos. Uh, we had a family issue, so I didn't. Uh, this afternoon, though, I am here, and what I'm going to do is between these two trees here... This one, and that one right there in the middle of your screen. They're about, I'm going to say 10 feet apart. I hope that's far enough apart. I'm going to set up, I'm going to set up my hammock. And then what I'm going to do is build a semi-permanent shelter out here that I can use uh, when I come out during uh, firearm deer season. And actually I was going to set it up yesterday and use it for during the bow season too, the late bow season. Um, Typically, I camp out here during muzzleloader season. Haven't done it before during firearm season because this is public land and it gets kind of crowded. But I'm far enough back now, and where I'm going to hunt is far enough back that I think I can avoid uh, avoid the crowds here and actually maybe uh, take advantage of of the pressure back in here and some of the thicker ground back here. But today, what I'm going to do is build a semi permanent shelter that doesn't require any man made materials to keep it together. And I brought some tools. Um, I'll go through that in just a minute. I'm going to grab some materials and uh, get ready to get started. Okay, there are the uh, three main tools that I'm going to use to build this shelter. I got my uh, the old brace and bit there with a ship's auger in it. I think that's about a five eighths bit. I'm guessing. Um, Fisker's axe. I know a lot of guys don't like that axe, but I think that's uh, for the price. It's a pretty. It's actually a quality tool. Extremely sharp, easy to sharpen. Uh, when I first bought that one, I gashed myself pretty good just bumping the blade. Uh, you got to be kind of careful with it. I need to have a sheath made for it. I still have the uh, the original plastic packaging that it came in, and that's what I carry it with. But uh, and then a 21-inch uh, bow saw. And what I'm going to do with that, I'll explain the uh, the brace and bit here just a little bit. I want to build a shelter here without drilling into those trees or tying anything to them, to that one and that one. That's my material pile for the most part there. Uh, that's just a starter, but as you can see, there's there's plenty to choose from out here. I don't, I'm not going to want for uh, want for any materials, but what I... Okay, guys, here's what I've got. <clears throat> I've got my supports up there. We'll turn it sideways and take a look at it. There you go. Hope that didn't make you dizzy. And over there, we'll stand back and take a look at this with our with the purlin across the top there. Yeah, maybe we can get it all in here. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, mark each end of that over those posts, over those supports. Cut a little notch out of them so they'll sit flat on there, so they'll they'll uh, it won't pop off of there. And then we'll uh, we'll screw them together, or actually pin them together. If you look real close there, you can see my notch. I'm going to uh, cut that out and uh, chop it away here. Okay, now you can, you can take a look at how that notch looks. You can see how that's been cut. I just uh, chopped that out with my uh, with my bow saw right here. Cut cut about a third of the way through it and used my the point of my K bar bacon making bacon maker which by the way uh, is a top-notch knife and then use my little uh, field expedient mallet which by the way is a little crooked but she swings nice um, to chip that out and uh, make that to make that notch and I made one exactly the same the other end Okay, before I lock these into place, I've taken that post down. I'm going to drill through the top of that notch and into that post um, so that I can put a pin in there. And I'll do the same at the other end so as soon as I put these up, I can pin them together. That way, they'll not only be locked in place with the tension of the tree, but they'll still they'll stay solid if, uh, you know, the wind blows and one of these trees is thinner than the other, obviously, and one bends more than the other, that's going to take the pre that could take the pressure off of it but I want to keep it standing, so we'll pin it together the old-fashioned way.
Okay, I've got the frame, the door frame anyways, the front frame built. Uh, you can see here, I'm going to have to straighten it up a little bit. My notch, this should be turned a little ways, but right now I've just got them so they're locked into, into place. And uh, I can get that pin in there a little bit farther when I get that turned right. I don't want to fiddle with it too much because I got some pretty good outtakes from this video of me dropping this purlin uh, a couple of times, this ridge. Uh, I don't want to do that anymore. So what I'm going to do is build my, uh, put my rafters in right here. Put those coming back here. And then uh, once that's done and those are solid, then I can adjust my uh, adjust my, my cross member there and that'll make it so it'll, so it'll stay. Okay, right there's the frame and it really is pretty rudimentary. Um, figure two things out. One, I need a longer tarp. And two, it's not as easy as it sounds to put that together. I mean, to make it sturdy. You can slap it up there, but without paracord, got to... Uh, use physics to your advantage. I've got everything kind of lodged in between those two trees there. Uh, but my tarp's going to be a little bit short, I think. I'm going to I'm going to set it up and try it. But I think it's maybe too short for what I'm trying to do here. Alright, now see what I was talking about? My tarp definitely isn't long enough if I set it up my normal way. That's normally how I put it. It would be uh, lower to the ground in the front, so I'd have plenty of room in the back to get that all the way to the ground. But right now as it is, my 8x10 tarp ain't going to work with the hammock, not in the square way. I'm, what I'm going to do is uh, tear it down and uh, try to do it sort of kitty corner and see uh, see how that works out. And I'll just move the move my uh, rafters down and, and see if I can make that work. Okay, keep in mind that this is just an experiment on my part. I got a little bit of extra tarp at that end. I'm a little short at that end. I'm running out of daylight here and I've got to pack up. I've got to work in the morning, so... This isn't an overnighter. This is just me trying out my stuff here. Uh, next week, next week we'll be out here overnight, and I've decided I'm just going to get a longer tarp. I don't like that uh, that setup right there. And of course, that stick right there is just kind of to hold it open, so you can see what it looks like. If uh, if I was going to stay in there tonight, I would uh, use one of my trekking poles and then uh, tie that out so it drapes on this side too. And of course, I'd stretch it to the left, stretch it over to that tree there. In fact, I just hang it between those two trees because uh, it's long enough, and that would uh, that would cover my that would cover my tarp pretty good. What I don't like about that setup is that the way I like to camp is. In fact, I've been here before. I did uh, put up some pictures of my my, sh my winter shelter last year that worked really nice. I used uh, a variation of the of Moore's uh, yeah Moore's Kohanskis. Uh, clear plastic, you know, with the uh, had the tarp with the clear plastic, and that kind of drew the heat in, and was really nice. And that's what I was planning on doing with this, but my tarp's obviously not big enough. That uh, that hammock is like nine foot long, I think, eight or nine foot long. So uh, my tarp's only eight by ten. But before I come out here, I'll buy a longer tarp. But if I had to, I could make that work tonight. And what I do is just tie this corner instead of having it up in the air catching the wind. I'd tie it down and I'd, I'd be covered up. But with that said, I'll tell you that I am looking forward to hammock camping. And I'll tell you why. If I can figure this thing out. My buddy Dave Turner over at David's Passage kind of sold me on the on the hammock. Uh, he's been hammock camping for some time. Uh, first time he brought his out was when uh, he and I came out here uh, together for the first time last year. Um, and I've, I've laid back in this thing. I'm not going to right now because I got my knife and my gun on. Although, you know, I guess I can drop those and try this thing out. But. Uh, I'm 43 years old, and I am too damned old to be sleeping on the ground. I can do it. I can do it if I need to do it. But I don't need to prove I'm a badass anymore. I'm not. So, you know, got a little extra cord hanging off my knife there. But 
with that said, when this is done, when I get my longer tarp and I do this the way I wanted to do it, that there's a log sitting right there. What I'm going to do is push that back. The uh, outside of my shelter will be right about here with clear plastic. I've got a poncho that goes on the, the end there to close that off. And of course, when it's on the right rafters the right way. And then clear plastic to go all the way around it. And uh, the way that works, I push that log back a good step, step and a half, build a long fire, and uh, I'm thinking that should keep me warm most of the night. I learned a lot of good lessons last year on uh, keeping warm. And uh, one of them is, you know, and I'm sure I'm not, I, I'm not the first to figure any of this out. Um, in fact, I, 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 some of it I learned from watching the Morse Kohansky videos. But if you take a, a good, long, some good long wood, start out with some good dry wood, then uh, build your fire up and, and go to some good long wood, you know, you can feed that in as the night goes on. And last winter when I was out here, before the drought of the summer, the wood out here was just soaked. Anything close to the ground was soaked. You take that, you throw that up behind your fire and let it dry. And when your fire gets good and hot, you throw a few pieces of that on, and that'll that'll smolder and burn all night. And that way, when you get up in the morning, if you want to uh, stoke it back up, it's all right there. And, of course, now some of my cutoffs here are going to be firewood. I kind of hoped to cut some firewood today for when I come out here in a couple of weeks. Actually, next weekend. But I don't think I'm going to have time for that. I am really looking forward to trying this thing out, though, without my shoes on. It uh, might take a little getting used to, but it sure does feel better than sleeping on the ground. I can tell that already. So I'll... Uh, hopefully be able to make a video when we uh, when I come back out here but another thing that I really like about this is I don't have to uh, I don't have to find a place to sit I've got a seat right here and it's comfortable and I imagine I can pull this back up lean back a little bit yeah maybe not too much but I'll learn the ins and outs of this thing and hopefully I won't fall out of it too many times uh, before before I learn but uh, what I'm really looking forward to is deer camp out here. Uh, two weeks, a little less than two weeks. It's the fourth today, so 11 days uh, until the season opens. And I'll be out here the 16th and 17th and uh, roaring fire and, uh, and hopefully a good night's sleep. Thanks for watching.